welcome to week 12 uh, last week of uh, classes i'm super excited to be actually talking to you about the uh, some of the last topics that i wanted to cover as part of this uh, course uh, hope you're enjoying the class and uh, hope you're also preparing for your exam as i posted in the um, mailing list if any of you are interested in talking to me clarifying questions uh, just just coming and talking about some of the things that you want to try or think feel free to Uh, send me an email and we can definitely catch up <clears throat> uh, so today is uh, week 12 what i wanted to cover is uh, uh, privacy standards and uh, uh, just just a summary of all the topics that we have seen uh, in this uh, course uh, what we have covered until now this is this is a sort of a template that i'm using what we have covered until now last class we covered privacy laws in detail um, uh, so i hope uh, you were able to I uh, go back uh, look at the uh, privacy laws um IT Act 2000 amendments uh, GDPR uh, PDP bill NPD uh, framework all of that you were able to take a look at uh, go beyond just the slides and the content that we are showing in the uh, class uh, because i think it's it's impossible to cover everything uh, in those documents right as i said some of those um documents can by itself be a semester long course what i wanted to cover this week privacy standards so privacy standards is kind of building on top of the regulations of the privacy laws uh, privacy standards are necessary because the the regulations may be saying that look concern has to be taken um um information has to be collected only the necessary information has to be collected collection limitation all of that sort of say principles can be set uh, but standards help in making sure that that's kind of uh, practiced making sure that it's kind of getting documented generally standards also has a lot of documentation to be done processes uh, to be followed that's what a standard uh, is for privacy standards uh, are are uh, why do we need standards i think we need uh, uh, to help to help uniformity across different organizations different states different uh, entities right Wipro and Infosys are uh, implementing some privacy standards, uh, privacy procedures uh, to understand how both of them have done well. I think uh, having a standard to say that look, you do all of this, tell us if you have done, how have you implemented it, that will help uh, uh, understand how well both of them have done the implementation of the privacy. I hope you understand, right? Uh, so the law says do this standard. helps to understand whether that's kind of done through processes through information capturing through uh a uh, questioner through um data collection that is made in inside the company so that's how a standard could be so for example um nac and nba right uh, accreditation for uh, academic institutes that's kind of um standard right what do they do they come and check uh, whether we are we are following the sort of say ugc guidelines we are teaching courses the way it is supposed to be taught having the 26 uh, uh touch points for the class having for what does a four credit mean how many homeworks have been done what exams have you set up document all of them and show us whether you have done it i right, so that's kind of a standard in the academic sense similarly privacy standards uh, do the same uh implementation of a regulation as i said compare organization right cmm is uh, capability maturity model which came out for software engineering uh cmm 1 to 5 just gives you a um sense of uh, where the company is right company 1 versus company 5 or a company 3 versus company 5 what does it mean company 5 basically argue um the the implementation would be that everybody understands uh, the uh, secure coding everybody understands uh, the information that is collected so cmm is not for privacy cmm is for so to say programming and how well they write the pro- programs all that Uh, but i'm just giving you a comparison for what could be a 5 and a 1 and a 5 or a 3 it's it's like the grades right uh, a b c d grade or nptel has 90% 70% 60% it's exactly that so here is one um, 
Uh, so this this slide, uh, this image is also may also be connected to the um, privacy laws that we discussed uh, last time, uh, because it actually talks about uh, omnibus privacy laws, sectoral uh, state privacy laws. So if you see sectoral state privacy laws, uh, ends up being in the U.S. Uh, omnibus privacy laws, um, limited privacy provisions, and no privacy laws, right? Uh, so omnibus privacy laws, you, yesterday we talked about Europe, um, European Union, all of that. So limited privacy uh, uh, provisions uh, are these orange spots that the uh, map has. Right. Uh, Australia also has a pretty pretty stringent privacy laws. So this this graph is built on, so to say, some concepts that I connected in uh, week 11. Privacy standard, right? One example of the privacy standard is ISO 27701. Um, this, is, uh, this is in conjunction with the ISO 27001, which you may have heard, right? You go to a, a manufacturing company uh, in, in nearby your place, it'll say ISO 27001 certified. You buy a, you buy a plastic mug, it would say that it's ISO 27, or a cooker, pressure cooker, if you buy it, it'll say ISO 27001 certified. So what does that mean? That means that the company making that pri pressure cooker has followed all the standards that uh, is expected to produce a good quality product. And uh, the so the next, so this one was in 2019, the privacy standard was written in 2019. And uh, ISO stands for International Organization for Standardization. Um, particularly 27701 is written for uh, privacy information management system. Essentially all the uh, regulations and everything that we saw, but in terms of understanding how it is being done. A company is implementing limitation, uh, and then you, you, you check whether the processes are actually not nobody else has access to information that uh, is required and the information that is collected is being only used for the purpose that it's collected all that so checking all this and making sure that it's it is happening the way it is said is what a standard is um, and 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 of course um, these standards are helping you to provide a mechanism to give more protection right making sure that the protection happens guidelines to implement they have documents they have uh, uh, expectations of how it should be implemented, which is written on the standard. So this is one type of a standard, ISO 27701. There are many privacy standards, so I, I think in the last 15, I mean, I think this privacy standard is also kind of overlapping with security standards, if you see. Privacy standards have been around for some time, and there are many standards that have come. I've just picked up some of the recent ones, so these are the ones that probably will end up, uh, uh, you will end up seeing in uh, wherever you go. Uh, the next one is NIST. Um, uh, NIST is again um, uh, a body in the U.S. which sets the standards, and this is a privacy framework, a tool for improving privacy through enterprise risk management. Again, all of this is done at the enterprise level because they want the companies to protect uh, privacy. If you delve into the document, this is what it is. So I thought one of the um, standard, we'll actually look at what the, what the standard is itself talking about. Um, so this all of you should know by now, how are your privacy framework, privacy risk management, what are the risks in information getting lost, all of that we have seen also, right, identity resolution, many of the anonymization, uh, breaches, these topics that we have seen in the class. Uh, privacy risk management, privacy risk assessment, right? You, if you remember, we also did this dread model once earlier in the semester, uh, where where we looked at uh, can you actually measure uh, what is the threat, what is the risk for a particular solution that being implemented. Then um, talks about uh, uh, framework basics. That's only the details of uh, core profiles and implementation ties. It's it's talking about how the implementation would all have to be done which is the next section actually talks in detail. Mapping to, informa uh, mapping to informative references, what all the policies, the implementation that the 
organization is doing, strengthening accountability if something goes wrong. I think in week 11 also we saw uh, in the loss, right? It has a three-year imprisonment or a five lakh or a three lakh uh, punishment money. Strengthening the accountability, establishing or improving a privacy program, which is tell people induction of the employees, onboarding of the employees, tell them about privacy, all of that. Applying to system development lifecycle, again, making sure that the privacy is part of the design, privacy is part of decision making, all that uh, in, in, um, in the life cycle of a product, life cycle of an implementation. Using within the data processing ecosystem, um, whatever the data is being processed, however the data processing ecosystem is built for a company, this implementation is done around that. Informing buying decisions, uh, keeping everybody involved, uh, letting others also know that these kind of privacy decisions, privacy implementation is being done. Right, so that's the uh, different different parts of the privacy standard. There's another standard that is being created in India. So this is uh, IS uh, 17428, which is Bureau of India Standards is is setting up this uh, uh, standard. And this is not mandated yet. It is left for the industry to adapt and implement it. Same as the NIST, same as the ISO 27701 standard, looking at only the privacy implementation and data protection implementation, privacy engineering and management principles, right? Which is which is what we've been talking until now. So that's what the privacy standards are. Uh, so privacy standards, again, in, in short, it is, a, it is an extension for privacy laws, uh, implementation in which a company can uh, showcase that they have uh, done the implementation well. Mm -hmm.